If you imagine any charged object, it will always have its own electric field all the way around it. Just like masses have gravitational fields and magnets have magnetic fields. To understand why this is important though, let's imagine that we have two particles, one with a positive charge and the other with a negative charge. Although you can think of the electric fields as diffuse areas of influence all around them, in physics we show them with field lines, which are just lines with arrows on. And importantly, the arrows always go from positive to negative. So they go out of our positive particle, but into our negative particle. The other thing to remember when you're drawing them is that you have to draw them at right angles to the surface. So perpendicular like this. And if you're asked to draw them in the exam, make sure you show a fair few. For example, eight like we have here. Now the strength of the field is strongest close to the particle and it gets weaker the further away you get. So as charged particles get closer together, the electric fields will start to interact more and more. If they're oppositely charged, like our particles here are, then there will be an attractive force between them, which we can call an electrostatic force, or in this case, electrostatic attraction. We can actually show this with their field lines by extending the field lines from the positive particle all the way over to the negative particle because remember they always go from the positive to the negative charge. If instead though, we had two particles of the same charge, for example, two positive particles or two negative particles, then the two particles would repel each other because alike charges repel. One last thing we need to cover is the strange interaction between electric fields and air. If we had an object that was really strongly charged, like this piece of metal, then it would have a strong electric field all around it, whereas the nearby air particles would have no charge. In this state, air is an electrical insulator and can't conduct any electricity. However, in some cases, a strong electric field, like the one around our piece of metal, can cause the surrounding air particles to lose electrons and become positive ions. We call this process ionization. And once air has been ionized like this, it's able to conduct electricity. And this is how sparks are able to travel between objects, traveling straight through the air. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So hope you found it useful and we'll see you soon.